Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from CNC3D. Today we're going to be talking about a recent update that we pushed through to our Sharp CNC Commander software. After you've got the latest update, you may notice you now have a Create button at the top in the center here. If you click on this button, you'll notice it'll take you through to a set of project creation tools that we have put together. This is the beginning of a section just to try to make it easy for people who are first starting out to quickly get productive with their CNC machines. At the moment, we've only added in a laser and plasma section. So we'll have a quick look at the two options that we have in here. The first is a laser image engraver. And the purpose of this tool is to basically allow you to import an image either in JPEG, PNG or bitmap format. And you can actually engrave this image directly onto, say for example, a piece of wood using your laser engraver. So we've got some basic features here. You can choose to adjust the output of the actual file. So you've got your width, your height, and of course your resolution in millimeters. You can choose to flip, rotate, um, basically standard sort of image creation options. And of course, invert the color of the image as well if you wanted to do something quite different. Then you've got your standard laser power output between a minimum and a maximum value. The lighter the color, that will go down lower, so towards the minimum value. We've got a mode between grayscale and dithered output. Although this is in, in development at the moment, we are looking at modifying this down the track, but the grayscale seems to work extremely well. You can then adjust the color of your image as well, so the brightness, the contrast, and of course the gamma as well, just to make the output suit your exact needs. Now, you also do have the feed rate. This is the feed rate that it will travel at as it's actually doing the engraving as it pans through line by line. And with the lines, you have a direction option in here between diagonal engraving and horizontal engraving. You can experiment with this and see which one is gonna suit you better. Now, we do have a units option in here, which is either metric or imperial output. So if your machine is an imperial machine, you can choose this output and save the G-code to suit. Once you're happy with everything, just hit the export G-code button and we can just save this file in here. And as you can see, it's generating down the bottom. Okay, that's now done. Let's just have a quick look at that file here. And as you can see, it's generated all of the G-code into standardized G-code for us. So we'll move on through to the SVG2 laser slash plasma creation tool. So what this is, is, is it will basically allow you to import an SVG file just by clicking on Browse. And then you can set your settings that you wish to use when you run this job. So for example, we've got an X offset and a Y offset. So these are an offset from the zero position until it actually starts the image. And then you've got your output size over the other side here as well. At the moment, this feature is currently scale locked between the X and the Y. We might look at changing that down the track depending on people's requests. We also have a scale correction option in here. We have noticed that some laser engravers, despite what these values are in the X and the Y, they do seem to come out, you know, sometimes say 9 to 10% smaller. So if you want to, you can adjust this to get the right size. Now, in the case of the laser engraver that we're using, we do find that there's a 10% variation there, and it does actually come out 10% bigger, so we can just reduce that there straight away. You've then got your standard feed rate option on here, your spindle slash torch on and off commands. So, depending on the type of job you're doing, if you're doing a plasma job, we do recommend M3. If you're doing a laser job and you are in laser mode on your GRBL controller, then use the M4 so that you get a smoother line through arcs and minimize overburning. Now, you can choose your actual power here for the actual spindle or the laser control. Typically for plasma, you should keep this the maximum for your machine just to make sure that the torch does ignite and then extinguish exactly as expected. Under here, we've got some specific plasma creation options. So for example, the pierce time. The pierce time is how long the controller will dwell after lighting the arc to ensure that the arc penetrates all the way through the material before dragging the torch through the rest of that particular shape. 
So we'll leave that at around two seconds for this test. And then you've got an after arc and delay. So this is basically a, a pause that will occur after the arc is extinguished. So some people might want to let it sit there for a couple of seconds after it finishes cutting a shape and then it will move on to the next shape and then continue to cut. We've also done the same thing before the torch goes off as well. You can choose on here so while the arc is still lit you can get it to finish the current movement and then sit there with the torch lit for X number of seconds that you can input here. This might be handy for allowing you to make sure a piece will successfully cut out of a location. Um, so give it a try and see what you think. Once you've gone through and set all of your settings you can choose to save laser g-code here if you wish to export the laser job. So we'll just save that one now. And then you can also choose to do the same for the plasma job here as well. So we'll just save that too. And we'll have a quick look at the files that we've output. So this is our laser job here. As you can see, it's all standardized g-code. Should make it nice and easy for you to use on pretty much any controller, but it will be optimized for a GRBL based controller. Now the only real difference between these two in this plasma job is we've added our delays in here which is for our torch. So the g-code is exactly the same just with the exception of a few of these. So that's basically it for now guys. We are looking at adding some more tools in the future. Please give us as much feedback as you can and we will eventually have some awesome tools in there for uh, CNC milling and 3D milling. Um, it's just a matter of time. So thank you very much guys. Your support has made this all worthwhile.